Continuing with symmetric encryption, we get to hash, uh, hashing, hash values. Um, now, um, as mentioned, uh, this is, well, this is mostly where we uh, get some of the um, accountability, uh, uh, dealing with issues of in integrity. Um, a, a hash is a, a representative value that uh, is calculated on the data um, so that we can identify the fact that it uh, has been changed if it's been changed and so we can verify that it uh, hasn't been changed. Now we've got all kinds of them. You know, we've got uh, checksums, we've got parity bits. Um, as previously mentioned, we've got um, Hamming code, which not only can detect errors, but actually correct them. But uh, um, here, when we're talking about hash values in cryptography, we're primarily looking at um, uh, complex uh, calculations done on um, the full uh, the full data file, the full message, the you know whatever the the full uh, plain text that we're trying to protect, and uh, well, we have to ensure um, that we are condensing um, a file of arbitrary length. It, it you know can be any size um, to a fixed representation. Um, now the fixed part of the representation is not absolutely necessary in all cases, but it is a good idea and uh, that tends to be the way that we define uh, a hash value. Um, now it's it's got to have certain properties. The, the calculation that we're doing, um, we should not be able to determine the original message uh, from the hash value. And uh, so, uh, well, again, as I, I said before, uh, arbitrary size file and fixed size hash uh, means that this is mathematically um, correct because uh, we do not know. There, there can be all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, even when we uh, attack, uh, say, password files with uh, a, a dictionary attack, um, we can come up with a password that will get us in, but we don't actually know that that is the password that was originally used. We just know that the hash value, because that's the way we store passwords, um, are the same. Um, so, uh, it's, it's one way we can't recover it. Uh, we can't recover the original data from it. Um, it should be computed on the entire message. It, it, you know, if it is not computed on the entire message, then we do not uh, and, and cannot know that this, uh, this file, um, has not changed in any way. You know, if, if we don't compute it on the entire message, uh, the, the parts we don't use could be changed and we don't have any indication of it. So there's that. And because it's on the entire message, we should be unable to compute the hash value of two messages stuck together whose hash values we know. Um, if, if we can do that, if we can take two uh, original messages, uh, compute their hash values, and somehow figure out what, when we hash the entire, you know, the, the combined message, um, then that indicates a weakness in uh, the hashing algorithm. So we shouldn't be able to do that. Um, so, uh, uh, we, and we refer to this as computationally infeasible to recover a message um, as that. And, and, you know, that is, is going on the work factor. Now, we use hashes all kinds of ways. Um, 
the uh, and and we'll get more into that as as we very shortly will be uh, discussing asymmetric encryption. Um, that is because the hash values represent a uh, a much smaller uh, piece of data in terms of uh, the encryption, and so generating digital signatures, we're we're generally doing that with uh, the hash values. Um, so. Uh, different uh, types of, of hashing, um, MD5, uh, SHA, uh, various types of message authentication codes. Um, and as we get into this, um, uh, well, and, uh, message authentication code and then, uh, or MAC, and, and then keyed MAC. Um, so let's uh, take the um, example of a, uh, we're in a court case. Uh, you know, uh, we have been in business, you and me, and uh, I have sent you an order uh, saying, send me 10,000 widgets, and um, you do, and, and then I uh, say, well, thank you for the 10,000 widgets, but I never ordered them, so I'm not gonna pay for them, and we end up in court. And um, then, you know, we have to verify that this is uh, your message. And, and here's where the, the limitations of symmetric encryption come into play. Um, we can, you know, uh, take a hash and, and say, well, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, this is the hash of the original message. Um, and, and, you know, it shows that this one saying, you know, I ordered 10,000 widgets is uh, the original message. But anybody can compute the hash value. And so, um, in that case, there isn't any way to say um, who created that message, that it was me rather than you. Um, but if we, and, and then if we say we've got the keyed Mac, you know, now the, um, the hash value has been encrypted, and it's encrypted with the uh, key that, you know, our, our secret key. The thing is, uh, you can say in court, you know, well, you know, Rob sent me this message and it was uh, verified by being encrypted with the key that we share, and I stand up and say, yeah, but that's the key that we share. You could have created that too. So there's the limitation of the symmetric encryption in terms of uh, authentication and integrity. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to this example. We'll, we'll uh, discuss this more in uh, a few other instances uh, as we go through here.